The courts may overturn a gift or contract secured by unconscionable conduct. This occurs when you have a party with a vulnerability and a stronger party who improperly exploits that vulnerability. In this case, the court considered whether emotional dependence could be such a vulnerability. The circumstances, however, were extreme and unusual. Louis Diprose fell madly in love with Mary Louth. Not sweet romantic love, this was toxic and obsessive. She didn't see him as a partner, but she didn't push him away completely either. He began composing volumes of poetry about her. She was a single mother with financial difficulties and she moved from Tasmania to Adelaide to live with her sister. He then also moved from Tasmania to Adelaide. Sometime later, the house Ms Louth was living in was set to be sold. Louth contacted Diprose, telling him how desperate she was not to be evicted. She made references to committing suicide. Diprose offered to purchase the house in her name. In effect, he gave her the house. Years later, he was still obsessed and she was still uninterested. Eventually, he changed his mind and sought to recover the house. The court's decision rested heavily on the first instance judge's assessment of the testimony of Louth and Diprose. The judge was not impressed by Mr Diprose, referring, for instance, to his pathetic devotion. But he found Ms Louth to have been calculating and false. Justice Dean said the relationship was plainly such that the respondent was under a special disability. That special disability arose not merely from the respondent's infatuation. It extended to the extraordinary vulnerability of the respondent in the false atmosphere of crisis in which he believed that the woman with whom he was completely in love and upon whom he was emotionally dependent was facing eviction from her home and suicide unless he provided the money for the purchase of the house. The appellant was aware of that special disability Indeed, to a significant extent, she had deliberately created it. She manipulated it to her advantage to influence the respondent to make the gift of the money to purchase the house. The court reversed the gift. What do we make of this case? We do learn that emotional dependence can be a vulnerability for unconscionable conduct. But the circumstances have to be truly extreme. Normal emotional vulnerability without manipulation, usually won't be enough. Mm.